Over the past 4.5 billion years, the conditions on Earth have changed dramatically. With these dramatic changes, life has evolved with the environment. Tetrapods comprise of the first four limbed vertebrates and their descendants, including the living and extinct. For example, reptiles, mammals, birds and some extinct fish. In order to understand the vast diversity of tetrapod forms, we must transport you back in time where primitive predecessors known as tetrapodomorphs began the morphological journey to a terrestrial lifestyle. We start our journey in the late Devonian, 385 million years ago, with some of the first tetrapodomorphs. A time very different to our own, a time of innovation, a transitionary phase where life emerges from the deep, dark depths of the ancient oceans and begins to pioneer increasingly available niches. Shortly after the successful invasion of land by plants, inexplicably atmospheric O2 levels plummeted by an event still undetermined yet today. During this time, the low levels of oxygen in the ocean put fish under potentially detrimental stress. These organisms had to adapt to survive, leading to evolutionary innovations to explore potentially more advantageous habitats. Eusineptron is a genus of lobe-finned fish that are strictly aquatic. Its fossil was first discovered in Quebec, Canada, dated to the late Devonian 385 million years ago. Anatomically, Eusineptron was 1.8 metres long and is one of the earliest known tetrapodomorphs. It had internal nostrils and labyrinthodont teeth, both of which are defining characteristics of tetrapodomorphs. Eusineptron possessed a two-part cranium hinged along the intracranial joint. It is famous for the passion of its fin endoskeleton, which bears a distinct humerus, ulna and radius of the four fins and femur, fibula and tibia of the pelvic fin. It had a swim bladder which aided in buoyancy, independent of swimming motion. It was the presence of the swim bladder that allowed the potential for Eusineptron to inhabit shallow waters. It was an active hunter in pelagic zones, possessing paired fins, including dorsal and median fins, and a primitive tail fin. Pandorictes is a prehistoric low fin fish that exhibits both derived and basal features. Its fossil was first discovered from Franzian deposit deposits in Latvia in the late Devonian. Pandorictes was up to 1.3 metres in length, which is a significant decrease in size compared to Eusineptron. Pandorictes exhibits a range of transitional features between low fin fish and tetrapods such as tetrapod-like flattened head and a broader back. The intracranial joint that was present in Eutroneptron is now lost from the skull but still remains in the brain case. The skull pattern is more similar to early tetrapods compared to Eutroneptron. The humerus in the fore region is larger than in previous tetrapodomorphs. The protolimbs become oriented at right angles to the body rather than being posteriorly pointed thus resembling more and more the tetrapods present today. This change in limb orientation along with new innovative muscular assemblage allows Pandorictes to raise its head above the water. Although it exhibits evolved four fin bones, it still possesses numerous long and thin fin rays typical of low fin fishes. The rear girdle however still remains quite primitive with the femur being less derived, suggesting that Pandorictes was incapable of hind leg tetrapod like propulsion due to the rear fins being undeveloped. Pandorictes la lacks dorsal and medial fins, the vertebrae column is fully ossified when in comparison to the vertebrae or similar to that of extant vertebrates. These low finned fish have a spherical chamber that was more evolved and greater in size than that of Eutoneptron. It was also considered to be one of the first species to exhibit facultative air breathing potential which is becoming increasingly more common within the tetrapod evolutionary line. Now we move into the Fomanian stage, 365 million years ago, with the emergence of the stem tetrapod Acanthostega. This is among one of the first vertebrate animals to possess recognisable limbs. Acanthostega was an intermediate evolutionary stage between the lobe-finned Pandorictes and tetrapods that were fully capable of terrestrialization. 
Acanthostega had true lungs, but the ribs were too short to give full support to the lung cavity out of water. As it was a stem tetrapod, along with its lungs, it still possessed internal gills, covered by a flap-like structure. Acanthostega developed teeth, allowing a shift from feeding exclusively in water to feeding with its head above the water on land. It possessed eight digits on its forelimbs linked by webbing. However, it is still unclear of its hind limb digits due to lack of fossil evidence. Acanthostega was the earliest stem tetrapod to show a transition from front limb dominated movement to hind limb dominated movement. It exhibits a pelvic girdle powerful enough to withstand the forces of gravity outside of the aquatic environment. However, Acanthostega could not fully bear its own weight due to having underdeveloped wrists and elbows. Because of this, it was probably more suited to shallow water environments, where it used its evolved limbs to hold on to the underwater plants and debris in an ambushed position. A few million years later, we begin to see the first tetrapods in the fossil record, occurring between 360 and 365 million years ago in the late to mid Devonian period. Ichthyostega was broadly built and around 1.5 metres in length. Ichthyostega had dorsally positioned eyes and was armed with large predatory labyrinthodont teeth. Like Acanthostega, Ichthyostega had internal gills covered with a gill flap and a spherical chamber located behind the eyes. Ichthyostega possessed lungs and limbs that enabled it to inhabit oxygen poor shallow swamps and lagoons and was of an amphibian build and habit. It was noted that its fore and hind girdles were stronger and more adapted to terrestrial life. The limbs were larger than earlier stem tetrapods, exhibiting seven digits per hind limb. The number of forelimb digits is not certain, as full fossils have yet to be found, though they are thought to have been larger than the hind limbs, and used to lift the body out of the water. Ichthyostega had more supportive overlapping ribs and a stronger spinal column suggesting that Ichthyostega may have ventured onto land on occasions, unlike in earlier stem tetrapods. Ichthyostega may have used its forelimbs for temporary terrestrial locomotion as they had the required range of movement to have lifted and dragged the body forward across the land, whereas its tail was used for efficient movement while aquatic. These anatomical modifications may have evolved to handle the lack of buoyancy on land. However, Ichthyostega wasn't yet capable of typical four-legged motion due to the limbs lacking the necessary range in motion. It is this lineage that gave rise to the tetrapod-like amphibians that truly developed the ability to conquer land. The Valencia Island Trackway in County Kerry is one of the most extensive Devonian tetrapod trackways. It was discovered by Iwan Stossel in 1994 and is dated at 385 million years ago. A primitive tetrapod passed along a muddy shoreline in the equatorial swampland that is now the southwest island. The creature left prints in the mud as if in wet concrete, and so began the dominance of vertebrates on land. This is one small step for tetrapods, and one giant leap for four-legged kind.